Good everyone, it's Angel Arumora here. I'm your favorite Australian and the real estate dingo bringing you another vlog. And today we're talking about property management. I'm gonna share some tips with you guys on the questions that you should ask to evaluate if a property management company is a good fit for you. Let's get it started. Okay guys, today we're talking about the crappiest, and I mean the crappiest part of real estate investing and that is property management and dealing with tenants and toilets. Um, I reluctantly decided to start my own property management company uh, when I initially started my turnkey company because I didn't think that I could have a successful turnkey company unless I had in-house property management. Um, now, of course, my thoughts on that have changed, um, so I guess I'm gonna be a little bit of a hypocrite um, and maybe you know, share a different viewpoint with you guys. Um, but you know, in all honesty, I think that we have done a great job um, over the years from an external uh, viewpoint. Um, you know, everyone's done very well, um, and you know, everyone's had tremendous success. But from an internal standpoint, it's kind of been tough, guys. I mean, it's a tough gig dealing with tenants. It's a tough gig dealing with toilets. You know, you're kind of spread thin, especially when you when you start a property management company, and in the early days, you're running around like a headless chicken, trying to turn out all of these fires. You know, when things start to get better and consistent is when you kind of start hitting, you know, that critical, I guess, massive scale as they as they start to say. And, and if you want to run, you know, a, a, um, a property management company in, leg in a legitimate way, you're not going to make money for a very long time unless until you start actually getting, you know, up to three, four, five hundred or a thousand units under management. And what we've done is we've always tried to keep honest and do it the right way, unlike a lot of other property managers out there. So with that kind of being said, just a little intro for you guys. Um, you know, property management, once again, it, it's not a sexy business. It's, it's a tough business, it's customer service. And I guess the toughest part is to keep your employees happy <laughs> and motivated and inspired and satisfied because they're constantly dealing with problems. There's always, you know, something going wrong and it's just a tough day to day being in that department. Um, but guys, look, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to wing this uh, uh, um, vlog here. I don't really have any kind of step by step, but I just want to share my experience with you of being in property management for the last, you know, how many years um, and, and kind of going through the tough times and getting to a point right now where I think we've, we've, we've mastered the craft um, uh, when it comes to property management. So some of the things when, when um, you know, looking to uh, hire a property manager, uh, well, first of all, I want to say this, anyone that thinks that they could manage properties successfully from out of state or country, I think that's a, a, a recipe for disaster. I strongly encourage you not to do that. Um, just because you're going to be dealing with the tenants and toilets. <laughs> They're going to be calling you and, and getting you to, to do all kinds of maintenance stuff, complaining to you all the time. You're going to have to be coordinating maintenance items to be repaired, coordinating access with the tenants. Then they're not going to be at the property. Then you're going to have to give them a 24-hour notice. Guys, you do not want to manage real estate from afar. You do not even want to manage real estate in your own backyard um, because that's not passive income, in my opinion. That's not financial freedom. That's a job. So, you know, you should invest in real estate and you should pass on property management to the experts. You should not self-manage. Look, that's just my opinion. Um, you know, I'm not saying that I'm right. I'm not saying that I'm wrong. Um, I'm just happy to share my opinion with you guys. So I don't think you should manage properties yourself. I mean, I definitely don't think you should even attempt to manage out of state or out of country because that is just absolute insanity. So how do you find a good property manager? That's the magic question, right? Look, it's tough because a lot of them are shady operators and a lot of them aren't doing the right thing. So some questions, in my opinion, that you should ask um, the property management company that you're interviewing would be, you know, first of all, how long have you been in business? Because I think the longer that a property management company has been in business, you know, the, the more experienced they will be in dealing with the certain nightmares that happen in property management. So that's a great question. Another thing that I would ask is, you know, what is your fee structure? Um, you know, how much do you charge every single month? What is your tenant placement fee? Do you have a leasing renewal fee? Do you have administrative charges? Do you have, do, do you up maintenance? Um, you know, now don't get too caught up in these fees um, because look, once again, property management is a tough business. Property management companies do a lot of work and they don't get much cheese, right, or money for doing all of that work. So, so don't crucify them if they charge all of these fees because they have to eat, they have to pay the bills. And you know, a lot of companies have a starving crowd, which equals employees that you have to pay. Um, uh, uh, what you don't want happening is you don't want property management um, taking advantage of you in the way where 
they will be upcharging maintenance in a ridiculous amount, number one. Or number two, they will be making up maintenance items that are non-existent just to charge you because that is fraud, that is cheating, that is lying, that is stealing, and that's not someone that you want to do business with. Um, but once again, don't crucify them for their fee structure. One thing that we um, uh, you know, haven't done, <clears throat> excuse me, for many years is we, we haven't charged at all. And I can tell you right now, that wasn't a smart idea. Um, I thought, you know, I've got a, a company that buys and sells houses, we'll make money doing that and we'll just, um, you know, manage um, as a, as a complement, complementary business to the buying and selling. And that was a bad idea, guys, because every business has to be profitable because if it is profitable, then that business can offer a service and value to its consumers or to its customers, right? So we've, of course, you know, um, changed our kind of policy, for lack of a better way of putting it, introduced different fee structures. Um, uh, Another way that you can see uh, you know, if, if someone's good or not is um, go online, check out their reviews, even though a lot of property management companies have bad reviews, guys, and I'll tell you why. Tenants, you can't make them happy. <laughs> Sometimes no matter what you do, you can't make them happy, and they're irrational, um, they get pissed off and frustrated, and then they go online and they post stupid crap. So no matter how much you try, and no matter how out of your way you go, sometimes you cannot make tenants happy. So I, I look, I think, um, Checking the online reviews um, is, is, is a great kind of, um, you know, put your finger on the pulse just to see where this property management company stands and what people are talking about them. But I don't really think it's a genuine guide in regards to who is a legitimate operator and who isn't. Um, what I think is very, 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 very important, guys, is communication. And I just spoke to an investor yesterday that came to our office and they said, you know, we interviewed a lot of property management companies. And um, so actually, no, we reached out to a lot of property management companies and didn't even reply. I'm like, what do you mean they didn't reply? And he said, well, I emailed them and I inquired, and, but I never got a response. And I was like, well, that's weird. I mean, you know, that's very weird because it's new business. I mean, you want as much business as you can get. So if these guys aren't replying promptly to someone that's interested in their services, just imagine, you know, the consequences there when it comes to dealing with you and your properties, um, you know, throughout the lifetime of your investment or dealing with the tenants and their maintenance issues. It's just not a good sign. So I think communication is very, very, very important. Um, you know, promptly communicating, trying to address um, the, the issues um, uh, as quickly as possible. Um, another question that you can potentially ask is, you know, what property management software do you use? Um, I think all legitimate property management companies have to have a software, um, either Buildium, Appfolio, Yardi, Property, where there's a lot of you know, um, softwares out there. We used Buildium, we've moved, moved over to Appfolio. Um, you know, they're all kind of the same, some are better than the others, but anyway, I still think that a property management company should have a um, software where they can kind of onboard you, give you access to your account so you can go in there and see what's going on um, on a month-to-month on -month basis or whenever you feel that you want to check in. Um, and guys, I guess, you know, last but not least, what I think is very important is, um, you know, ask for a referral to someone um, that has had their properties under the property management company's um, uh, umbrella for lack of a better way of putting it, for an extended period of time. Um, because I honestly think that, you know, the referral is going to be your, your most honest um, um, critic. It's going to be the most honest critic. They're going to really, you know, tell you um, how this company operates, you know, uh, once, once they kind of take over management for, you know, six, 12 months or two years or whatever it may be. Because I think, you know, proof is in the pudding, right? Um, the track record is, is where you can kind of get the best insight in regards to how that property management company will perform. So um, there you have it, guys. I kind of winged it a little bit. It's just something that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, you know, a few key questions off, you know, off the top of my head that I think you should ask. Um, definitely don't manage yourself. Um, I think time is money. You should focus on finding and buying um, amazing property, not dealing with tenants and toilets. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. You know, if you guys have any other suggestions or tips on some of the questions that, you know, investors should ask of their property manager or someone that they're looking at hiring, um, please comment below. Um, any property management nightmares, I know there's a lot of them out there, um, comment below, I'd love to hear from you too. Um, but guys, that's pretty much it. I'm Angela Ramora, I'm your favorite Australian, and I'll catch you in the next vlog. You guys have a great day.